Hi, this is going to be the first lecture on path connectedness. Possibly there may be two lectures, and this is again part. This is a part of the connectedness series. In the connectedness series, this will be the tenth lecture, and this, of course, which is in part of topology series, which will be some nth lecture where n is about thirty or whatever it is. I don't remember that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so let us get started. yeah anyway this you can see me this is the the youtube channel and please subscribe to that and please inform your juniors other interested students of mathematics about this channel request them to subscribe and tell them that you know, all these excellent videos are free okay and this is my email id yeah, this is the title of today's talk. I'm just giving some time so that if you want to take down this, you know, any of these things, it will be good. Earlier I was impatient, I didn't stop to show these things. But some, if you want to look at the references you want to take down, if you pause the video, it's blurred. You can't even see properly. Okay, I learned it the hard way. That's why I'm doing it. Okay, let us get started. So let us look at let x tau be a topological space. Right? Let alpha be a continuous map from 0, 1 to x. Okay. So let us look at a picture. This will be like this. This is 0. 1 part of r this is my space and this is my alpha and the map may be like this okay and this this may be alpha of 0 this may be alpha of 1 okay so alpha is called a path so a path in a topological space is nothing other than a continuous map from a closed and bounded interval usually we will take it to be 0 1 i will come to that to x and the point alpha 0 this is called the initial point initial point of the path alpha 1 terminal point or the end point of the path alpha okay and what i have denoted here you can see this is the image of alpha in x this is your x okay and let us be very clear the path is this map alpha this is a continuous map from 0 1 to x whereas the trace or track of the path is the image okay so even though pictorially it looks nice to think of a path as just the image but remember for us path is always a continuous map you will find it little subtle and little uh, disturbing but bear with me i'll give some examples so that we'll look at it carefully okay it takes a little time we will do that step one step at a time first thing is okay even though we took any path the domain should be zero one it could be any path any closed and bound interval alpha could be this continuous map then this is also a path the reason is you know there is a very natural map of a b and 0 1 which is a okay continuous bijection so homeomorphism right let me look at 0 1 to a b or it doesn't matter whichever you want okay these are homeomorphism okay so what should happen t should go to 0 a plus and then t into b minus a when t equal to 0 it is a and when t equal to 1 uh, it is b right this is the map okay 
therefore if you give me alpha from a b to x i have an alpha dash from 0 1 to x a continuous map what is that map so alpha dash at t is alpha of a plus t into b minus a okay and conversely i can do that and given given alpha dash so let us say beta from 0 1 to x then i have a beta dash for any map a b okay because i can use the obvious this is a map you can just invert this if you call this as h then h inverse will be a homeomorphism a b to 0 1 okay so the first point i want to say is okay it's a it's a kind of simply a custom or a tradition okay take 0 1 as the domain of a path though it's not necessary so a path could be a continuous function from any closed and bounded interval a b to the topological space x okay so pause review proceed so people should not spend unnecessary time to kind of re-parameterize if i give a path alpha from a b to x then uh, you, your teacher will say no, no i want a path from 0 1 then you may be tempted to do that you can do it but it's a waste of time okay you can do anything okay now let's give examples okay of course the first example i don't want to talk about i'll do it later the first example suppose my x is rn right and fix two points x and y in capital x then alpha from 0 1 to x okay is a map which whose track is a path whose track is the line segment do you understand this alpha of t is x plus t into y minus x which is same as 1 minus t in x plus t times y so this is your x this is your y this is your alpha 0 this is your alpha 1 okay so this is a track line segment so that track of alpha is the line segment connecting x and y in rn okay and we had already seen many times this is a continuous map etc therefore this is a path and we say yeah going back to the general case if alpha is a path from 0 1 to x then we say alpha connects alpha 0 to alpha 1 the, the alpha 0 the uh, initial point alpha 1 is a terminal point we say it's a path connecting the in initial point alpha 0 to the terminal point alpha 1 therefore the okay here is a this alpha is whose track is line segment you will simply say alpha is a line segment but they are different okay you may think why i'm making so much of fuzz okay let us just look at a simple example suppose again i have 0 1 and let's look at r2 this is my topological space okay now let's look at two pass alpha and beta alpha of t is t comma 0 and beta of t let us say t cube comma 0 right now what is the track track of alpha is same as track of beta namely there will be this this is the track you understand that so don't think of t cubed it will be something like curved or anything t cubed will be a point between 0 and 1 because t is between 0 and 1 therefore t cubed will also be between 0 and 1 therefore it is both our line segment do you understand that 
but for us the path alpha and the path beta are different okay how do you think of them as different okay let, let me give a, a real life example okay this is a city okay this is a city let us say b this is a city a and this is a railway track okay right now i can have a train alpha which starts okay at some time say nine o'clock reaches the city b at 11 o'clock two hour journey right whereas there may be this may be express train whereas there may be another train which starts midnight zero and reaches at six o'clock in the morning right but if you look at their track they are the same they use the same track but these two trains are different right or if, if possible think of this this is one the same one reaches let us say this is zero to 2 and 0 to 2. You can't think of them both going together, but just imagine. Okay? These are two different trains. Okay? So, our paths are like trains and their trains are like tracks. The images are like tracks. Okay? Pause. Review. Proceed. The, this distinction is not well understood, so students get confused. Okay? For example, this one, they will immediately try to draw something like a cow. It's a... Okay? try to understand these cases okay path is different from its image even though for intuitive reason geometric reason we always look at the image try to get an idea but for us the path is always a function okay the next important path for us is this let us look at the, the path uh, again r2 okay let us look at a circle okay what is that thing? So alpha is let us say zero one to R two. Okay. So alpha of t let us say cos two pi t sine two pi t. Then what does it mean? So alpha of zero is one comma zero, which is also alpha at one. So the picture is I have at zero, one zero, then it's a circle. right so the terminal point and uh, uh, so initial point are the same so such a path is called a loop okay so but that's a path okay now again to make understand why we distinguish between this okay let me define a beta of t equal to cos of 2 pi minus cos of 2 pi t i sin of minus 2 pi t right now let us see what is alpha at half alpha at half you can see is going to be cos pi sorry alpha by pi let me say my pi by 4 yeah pi, Lord, pi by 2 is good enough yeah right right so pi yeah it's pi by four so one by four alpha at one by four it is going to be cos two pi one by four there is cos pi by two that is zero and sine pi by two it's one therefore it's going to be zero one what whereas what is beta at one by four that is zero and minus one because cos is even whereas sin is not even therefore that will be minus 1 do you understand therefore alpha let me put it alpha goes like this at this is at uh, 0 t equal to 0 at t equal to 1 fourth t equal to half t equal to 3 fourth t equal to 1 it comes back okay whereas what does beta path takes beta path goes like this okay it starts from here and then it comes here it goes like this and goes here 
goes here and then goes here so the tracks are the same okay wait uh, but then as a path is different right if you think of a loop train okay it goes to the first uh, it starts with the uh, town a city a then goes to city b and then comes to city d and then comes to city d then comes back to a whereas uh, the beta train starts with a and then goes in the opposite direction it goes to d then goes to c then goes to b then goes to a do you understand so more generally let us look at alpha n to to be cos 2 pi n t sin 2 pi n t if you want to take n to be any integer when n equal to 0 is constant okay then if you have many times if n is greater than or equal to 1 then it goes around this n n times it comes okay 1 2 3 n times do you follow that so all these paths are different okay pause review proceed alpha n for at least n greater than equal to 2 goes around the track n times in counterclockwise direction so clock goes this way it goes this way and comes back and once to n means it goes n times it hits one zero n times starts from there and comes to one zero again comes to one zero and comes to one zero if n equal to three like that okay so now are you convinced so what is the path path is a continuous map zero one two x okay and what is that uh, alpha zero is called initial point alpha one is called the terminal point and when the alpha 0 equal to alpha 1 we call it a loop okay next what is the image of alpha that is a subset of x that subset is called the track but for geometric reason we may think of the track as the path itself but that's not correct the path for us should always be a function so we have given a lot of examples please understand right so that's enough now we are ready for the definition okay so let x now be a topological space we say that x is path connected if for every x comma y in x there exists a path alpha connecting x to y what does that mean that is this sentence is same as this sentence if for every x y in capital x there exists a continuous map alpha from 0 1 to x so that alpha of 0 is x and alpha at 1 is y okay this is what this is right so again pictorially how do, how should it look like it look like this so if you have given me some alpha okay this is x and y okay then there will there will be a path alpha let us say x1 y1 then there is a path alpha 1 from 0 1 to x okay this may be my alpha 1 and suppose i had given x2 this is also equal to x2 and x y2 this is x2 also then this path may be this one this is your alpha 2 and suppose you had given me an x3 and y3 this may be a path so for all x and y there should always be a path connecting x and y it's better to have the geometry also even though remember whatever i am drawing in the space x is the track 
keep that in mind okay right so let us look at some examples so path connected spaces the first example for me always is rn is path connected i am sure all of you know how we proved it in connectedness it's the same thing actually when we proved connectedness of various spaces what we used was we tried to give a path okay you will understand go through these things so you give me an x and y in rn so what is the path all of you know that right 0 to rn so that alpha t is 1 minus t x plus t times y that is a line segment i will simply say it's a line segment remember it's a track of the path okay but still we will loosely say that it's a line segment the path connecting x and y is a line segment from x to y is that all right okay therefore rn is path connected next <laughs> so a circle s1 and r2 remember this is uh, what we call when we, what is this this is a unit circle given by x squared plus y squared equal to 1 that is center at origin radius 1 okay in r2 this is path connected the idea for that is very easy suppose you give me right any x and y in s1 i can think of this x y as a cos theta and sin theta for theta between 0 and 2 pi right therefore if you give me x1 y1 and x2 y2 in s1 then there is a theta 1 which correspond to this theta 2 which correspond to that that is x1 is cos theta 1 and x2 is cos theta 2 etc etc okay right so with our loss of generality let me assume theta 1 is less than theta 2 then i simply restrict this map the usual parameterization map to this this actually is the space is s1 now with the subspace topology theta going to cos theta and sin theta so it is like this so i have this okay now i have two points okay this is theta one and this is theta two therefore the path is this this is the path only the torque yeah okay now let's give some abstract example suppose x has only two elements zero and one okay and the topology is empty set must be there x must be there and then say singleton zero is there check this is a topology okay arbitrary union etc you know what it is intersection also it's very clear therefore it's a topology right now i want so this is a space space consists of only two points see the reason why i thought of this example is many in path connected it's always good to see this kind of things looking at the tracks thinking of the curve joining x and y etc that okay that is a very good geometric intuition we should have that but on the other hand we should be very very guarded our definition of a path is a function okay so we should not lose sight of that okay so you can't so i i wanted to think of an example where you can't think of something like a curve joining a point to point so i want to say this is path connected right so the example i'm going to give is very simple alpha of 0 1 to my x is alpha of t is 0 if 0 less than equal to t less than 1 and equal to 1 if t equal to 1 okay so notice that if it is a continuous then it's a path connecting 0 to 1 do you understand that if alpha is continuous then alpha is a path connecting 0 to 1 but is it a thing 
to check this continuous what i have to check i have to look for inverse images of open sets see inverse images of empty set x etc are trivial therefore i should only look at inverse image of singleton zero but that is zero to one and this is open where in the space zero one because 0 1 what is the topology subspace topology inherited from the usual topology and r therefore minus infinity to 0 intersected with 0 1 is 0 1 this is open in 0 1 you understand that therefore it turns out alpha is a continuous map from where to where 0 1 tx and it's a path connecting 0 to 1 and can it there are only two elements can you think of any path cow etc yeah so pause review proceed okay now the next third okay let's look at an abstract thing so suppose this is my space x and suppose i have a path connecting x to y let me just uh, write as easy path instead of itself intersection this is my x this is my way and further assume there is a path uh, connecting y to z so call this path as alpha uh, this path as beta and this path as alpha right so what 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 is our assumption i have a path alpha which connects x to y I have another path beta which connects to y to z okay think of this alpha is a train there is a train which takes me from x to y there is also another train which takes me from y to z so i want to reach x to z by trains can i do that okay you understand in other words in mathematics we want to know if y is path connected to x and z is path connected to y I am using that word now. Okay, I have not used it there so far. If alpha of 0 is x, alpha of 1 is y, I said alpha is a path from x to y. I also say y is connected to x. Y is connected to x via the path alpha. Okay, this, it may not be very common words, but many people you know interchangeably use lots of such words okay or you can also say x is path connected to y whatever okay there seems to be some kind of symmetry right let us work it out later okay so the question is in under such situation can i say z is path connected to x this is the question so and this is where the word juxtaposition of path that is placing side by side of paths so what it means uh, I define a new path gamma so this is my 0 this is my 1 and let me look at this path let me try look at the path this is a uh, uh, x to y alpha and from here to this this is my beta from this to z right now what i do is i do want to define a path that is let us look at the midpoint half okay now you think of this as a train i want to speed up the train twice okay i want to go double the speed so that if you think of zero i start at zero within one hour let us say one unit of time i reach x i reach y from x y alpha i want to speed up the train alpha so that it goes twice as far therefore within half unit i reach y so how will i do that if i do alpha t to t then alpha of t equal to zero okay will be x and at t equal to half this is alpha one that will reach one do you understand that I'll write it carefully, don't worry. So gamma of t is alpha times 2t for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to half. <coughs> so now I took the train 
and reach from x to y in half the time so i still have another half an hour to reach from to y to z another half unit of time now what do i do i use the beta train how do i do that i take it so essentially you are mapping half one to zero one how do i do that is a question that is 2t minus one when t equal to z uh, half it is zero right 2t minus one is zero when t equal to one it is two one two minus one which is one do you understand that's it are you following yeah so this is a map at least gamma is a map from zero one to x with what property gamma of zero is half x gamma of half is y and gamma of one is z now only thing is to say it is a path from x to y or it's a path connecting x and sorry x to z or it's a path connecting x and z what i have to show is to prove is gamma continuous if gamma is continuous then it's a path connecting x to z do you understand this but that's very easy this is what is known as gluing lemma all of you know that if you had attended my watch my lectures on continuity i have spread two kinds of two gluing lemma and i also said two ways of looking gluing lemma because many textbooks will not say that anyway please visit my one of my videos okay okay so now notice that this map gamma is continuous and zero half why it's continuous t going to 2t is continuous 2t going to alpha okay this is continuous therefore composite are continuous map therefore alpha is continuous on this and similarly gamma is continuous and half to one because t goes to 2t minus 1 that's a continuous map of r to r and that followed by beta because the, this leaves where does it live it leaves on 0 1 right 2x this leaves in 0 1 and 2x okay and beta is a continuous map therefore composite a continuous map therefore come on now on 0 1 this is a closed set and this again another closed set okay now so now i have defined and also no, gamma of half okay is well defined why because what is gamma of half it is you can think of it as either alpha of 2t that is alpha of 1 or beta of 2t minus 1 which is beta of 0 okay but what is our assumption both are equal to y right therefore gamma is continuous so let me recall the relevant thing x is a topological space assume x is written as a union b right and let's assume f from a to let me just r only and g from b to r continuous assume a and b are closed okay all right and assume f of x equal to g of x for all x in common intersection a intersection b so this is a picture i have x this is my a this is my b and this is a common thing okay so on this my f and g coincide then i define a new function h equal to f of x if x is in a and g of x is x is in b right now notice that if x belong to a intersection b then fx is same as gx therefore this is well defined h is well defined right function then the gluing lemma says h is continuous okay i perhaps for those of you who are not understood gluing lemma i should have done this first therefore let's go back so what did i do i have the first thing i have a gamma one 
of t so gamma 1 is from 0 to half to x what is gamma 1 of t it is alpha of 2t so we checked gamma 1 is continuous on this and similarly i had a gamma 2 which is half to 1 to x how is it defined gamma 2 of t is beta of 2t minus 1 this is continuous so gamma 1 is continuous gamma 2 is continuous and gamma 1 equal to gamma 2 on the intersection that is gamma 1 of t half is gamma 2 of half because this is equal to alpha of 1 this is equal to beta of 0 right therefore by gluing lemma okay the function gamma is continuous okay pause review proceed yeah so let us recall so what have we shown let us again go back to the picture i have a path okay, x to y okay i have another path y to z this is alpha this is beta then i have a path what is the path the new path is exactly the same path i increase the speed of the train reach within half the distance half the time i reach here and the next half the time i again increase the speed double the speed i reach from y to z okay the formula is explicitly given we checked using gluing lemma such a function is continuous therefore it's a genuine path okay right why we needed this is a very important concept so pause we will proceed so we are going to prove a theorem the theorem is x is path connected if and only if there exists a p in x so that for every q in x there exists a path alpha connecting p to q do you understand to have an idea remember when you define star shaped set okay what did you have there is a point p and give me any point okay the line segment joining p to that is there it's some kind of generalization you understand that this theorem yeah okay so what does it say okay are you following this so pictorial it says this i have a point call this point a, a special name this is my point p now give me whatever x you want to give me okay there is a path and you give me another path y then there is a path connecting this and uh, give me another thing z there is a path connecting that okay so all points are connected to p yeah right now how do i prove that okay this requires a little trick okay now let's understand so to show its path connected what should i do so first suppose x is path connected then choose any p any p right now you give a q since x is path connected there is a path alpha from 0 1 to x so that alpha of 0 is p and alpha at 1 is q right therefore the necessary condition is true that is x is path connected you can choose any point in the space then there is always a path which connects that point to any point q yeah that's easy so converse is what we want to do so if i want to do converse let us try to understand so i have x p here i have x and y what do i want is i want a path here but what i know is there is a path which connects p to x and there is a path which connects 
so this is my x this is my y so there is a path alpha there is a path beta which connects right now what do i want is i want a path which connects yes now think of it as a uh, again uh, think of real life example okay i know from a city p i can reach x i can from the city p i can reach y okay then i want to reach x i want to go from x to y okay then okay you understand just because i only know how to go from p to x and p from p to y i want to know how to go from x to y how do you think i will do i will take the return bus which takes me from p to x if alpha is a path which takes me from p to x then i'll take the return bus which takes me from x to p and take the beta bus to take from which takes me from p to y do you understand so the original path is like this right but now i take the reverse one okay let me look at a different name i take a reverse path you follow that i will define it don't worry so how do you define see if alpha is a path from 0 1 to x let me define alpha tilde is the reverse path so again picture i have so this is the path alpha it goes from here so my beta is the alpha tilde is a path which goes from here to here yeah so that means alpha tilde at zero must be my y and alpha tilde at y should be x so how do i do that alpha 1 minus t that's it so when t is 1 when t is 0 therefore what is alpha tilde 0 alpha at 1 therefore it is y and then alpha tilde 1 that is alpha of 1 minus 1 which is alpha of 0 which is x and is alpha tilde continuous yes it's a continuous right therefore alpha tilde connects y to x do you understand this and it's a path right okay now do you see that this is enough to prove whatever i did to prove this that is assume there is a point p so that give me any point q okay there is a path alpha which connects p to q then i want to prove give me any two points x and y there is a path which connects x to y how will you do that i have already done that right so let alpha be the path which connects p to x therefore alpha tilde so let me look at alpha tilde is the path which connects x to p then beta is the path which connects p to y therefore what do you think i will do i will juxtaposition of two paths that is travel from x to p via alpha tilde and from p to y via beta okay so i have forgotten the notation the earlier notation what i did alpha okay this juxtaposition this is my notation may not be standard standard notation this is alpha juxtaposed beta right do you remember that is this means gamma t is alpha 2t from 0 less than equal to t less than equal to half and equal to beta 2t minus 1 where half less than equal to t less than equal to 1 okay that is the juxtaposition this gamma is called this therefore the path gamma gamma which connects x and y is given by what is that juxtapose alpha tilde which connects alpha is from p to x therefore alpha tilde the reverse path connects x to p and then 
followed by beta do you understand and we know this is continuous this is continuous juxtaposition of continuous things therefore this is continuous therefore gamma is a path continuous do you understand this yeah therefore theorem is proved so what is the application the application is what i saw first any star shaped subset a of rn is path connected how many of you see that because the my earlier picture already gave that right when i define the motivation for this I already said that if since a star shape there is a p so that give me any q the line segment p to q is contained in the set okay but we have seen the line segment intuitively right it's a path connecting p to q right therefore given any q in the star shape set there is a path which connects p to q therefore the star shape set is connected and hence path con convex sets are also connected or path connected sorry and similarly vector subspaces and translates of vector subspaces are path connected as i said earlier you should see the way we proved these are connected is actually by use of line segment therefore if i define path connected as there itself i could have shown these space are path connected okay i hope you understand so pause review proceed we will meet in the next lecture and probably we will finish this okay path connector space i think one more lecture i may be able to complete it so please go through that i hope you enjoyed the examples and also my insistence a yeah, path is different from the track but you want though track is very important because it gives us geometric intuition yeah don't forget okay we'll meet again